Hey Bookaholics and welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you my October and November book haul. So these are all the books that I have bought in October and November. There are quite a few. I've been book shopping. I've seen some fantastic stuff second hand. There have been lots of sales on. And yeah, I'm just going to get straight into it. Um, I think I'll start with my weirdly large graphic novel and manga um, acquisitions first. So uh, in my local shopping centre, they have had a sale on for graphic novels. So for this set of graphic novels. So I have been picking them up. And it is basically a collection of Marvel bind ups um the first one was avenger the avengers which they had sold out of by the time i got to them and they had also sold out of the seventh one which was dark phoenix but i'll go through the ones that i do have so i have number two which is black panther number three which is black widow number four which is Captain America number five which is Deadpool number six which is Iron Man as I said I do not have number seven number eight which is Spider-Man uh, number nine which is Wolverine and number ten which is I'm not sure if it's X-Force or X-Men. I'm not sure. Um, I think X-Men by the look of it because it's all the traditional, the, the typical characters from X-Men. Um, these are all in Spanish uh, but with graphic novels I never feel like it makes a huge difference um, because you're not in it for the writing style or anything. It's, it's just the dialogue. Um, so yeah, these are basically um, bind ups of multiple volumes from Marvel across the years. Each one has 240 pages um, and it's, it's like a kind of best bits almost from the 2000s. And yeah, I'm very excited to be getting into these. My kids are already having a fantastic time with them. So um, I'm looking forward to getting to them myself. The next one that I got, and this is this is probably going to make me regret so many things, but I picked up one piece. I picked up the very first volume, uh, Romance Dawn, um, for one piece. It's a teeny tiny one, it's literally just the first volume, but it's two euros, and I thought, well, everyone seems to be going mental over one piece, I'll give it a go. I'm not a huge manga person, I'm not gonna lie, like the mangas that I've read so far have been good, but like not life-changing. I've read, so far I have read um, Tokyo Ghoul and Full Metal Alchemist, um, and yeah, I've enjoyed both of them. I just, I enjoyed Format Alchemist substantially more, um, but yeah, I figured I'd give One Piece a go. I have no idea what this is about. It was two euros and everyone's going mental over it, so I thought, why not? I do believe that it's a pirate style one. I think it's about this guy who wants to be king of the pirates. Um, and yeah, I don't know anything else about it, but I'm looking forward to giving it a go, because why not? <laughs> And then the last thing in the graphic novel section that I got is I got the first entire volume of The Boys. This was actually cheaper than a load of the like standard paperback and bind ups that I could find in my local shop. So I was like, this is actually really cheap for what it is because it's like a hardcover and it's like a really pretty one. It's, um, you know, printed directly onto the dust jacket and uh you know it's got like the ribbon and everything and it's a really nice quality one and it was a lot cheaper than like i said than a lot of the um uh the the standard paperback ones so but yeah uh the art style is also really cool in these but this one is what the tv amazon tv show the boys with carl urban in it uh is based on it does look like it's like slightly different uh, it's more like a vibe and a overall story than individual plot lines but 
I'm excited to see the original source material because The Boys is one of my favourite TV series. And it's basically like a, a, a dark superhero um, series where it's basically kind of like a, a pessimistic take on what the world would be like if we didn't have superheroes. Um, you know, how corporate and how um, consumerism would come into play, etc. Um, and obviously misuse of an abuse of power. So yeah, we're following a group of guys who are trying to take down this major corporation that literally specializes in superheroes. Um, and I'm excited, um, slightly terrified because I imagine it's gonna get very graphic, but I'm excited. Anyway, onto some of the like actual novels. Um, I'll start with YA. Um, so first I have the uh, Blood of Stars duology by Elizabeth Lim. The first one being Spin the Dawn and the second being Unravel the Dusk. And this series is about a girl, oh what's her name, by, called Maya, who is, um, who basically wants to be the tailor to the king. Uh, to the emperor even and um, she has to enter this contest but to enter this contest you have to be male so she takes up her brother's place um, to try and win this contest I do believe it's also heavily uh, focused on the romance and she has to make three outfits but they need to be like magical outfits like I think they're making them out of like moonlight or something you know they're making them magical in some way shape or form and um I'm looking forward to that element. I think it's going to be nicely descriptive. So um, I've heard amazing things about Elizabeth Lim writing. Everyone seems to be going mental over her newer release. So I'll give these a whirl and see how I like it. And the other YA series that I picked up was the Sands of Arabia. Is that what the series is called? I can't remember. I think it's Sands of Arabia. Uh, by Hafsa Faisal, um, the first book being We Hunt the Flame and the second book being We Free the Stars. And also, can we just comment on how absolutely stunning these books are together? Just, they are so beautiful. Anyway, uh, this is a kind of Robin Hood-esque story, I believe, in which we are following a girl um, called Zephira, who is... Um, pretending to be a man and is kind of I think essentially stealing from the rich to feed the poor um so she's kind of like a Robin Hood-esque character but she knows that she would be condemned should her true identity as a woman be let out and uh she goes on this journey um to return magic to the land and um the Prince of Death, so the son of the Emperor, also embarks on this quest, but for a very different purpose. And I believe it's an enemies to lovers story. So again, very excited for these. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they will give me like enough like feminist vibes because you know, the whole like Robin Hood, but as a woman retelling just really calls to me. Um, okay, next I'll go, I guess, with some of my standalones, my adult standalones. The first one that I did pick up, yes, Eleanor, I did pick it up. I picked up Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. This one is uh, Susanna Clarke's newest release and is actually the newest winner of the Women's uh, Prize for Fiction. It won the 2021 prize. And this one is a teeny tiny story about, I have no idea. I have no idea what this story is about. And if you read the back it doesn't it doesn't mean anything i don't know what this story is about it's just i think it's one of those it's really whimsical and that i'm actually not going to have a clue what it's about until i get to the end of the book and they're like ah, okay i think i get it uh i feel like you know the same as the starless sea where you could give a synopsis for the starless sea and it's not the synopsis of the starless sea because you can't actually describe it i feel like this one's going to be that way inclined as well so i'm not going to even try but i know that eleanor absolutely loves this book um, Eleanor, who I will leave linked in the description box, is my friend, and this is her favourite book of the year. So, of course, I picked it up on her recommendation. The next one that I have here is The Female Man by Joanna Russ. And this one I actually had first mentioned on the Booktube Goddesses channel, so I'll leave, link, I'll leave them linked down below as well. Um, but this one is um, a classic sci-fi. I mean, it's a SF masterworks book this is edition uh but yes this one is about four women who are in parallel worlds and like so one is basically in our world so it's like a 
it still leans patriarchal but it's you know getting better for women's rights and then you've got one where only women exist there are no men and then there's another world where we have um a heavily patriarchal society and then you have another one i think where men and women are at war with each other um i don't know how all the stories intertwine but it's supposed to be very feminist and i'm looking forward to it um but yeah uh, the booktube goddess did the femathon tag in um in femathon in march and um yeah they responded to every question with this book so yeah i'm excited to pick it up <laughs> The next one that I have is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is another one that's been doing its rounds on the bookosphere. And uh, this one is about a girl called Cassiopeia whose mother ran away, married her father, her family disapproved, her father has passed away, so now they have had to return to her mother's family home. And her and her mother are treated essentially as servants in the home. And one day, uh, Cassiopeia accidentally releases from her grandfather's office, I think. I think she accidentally releases the Mayan god of death. Everyone compares this to the Bear and the Nightingale. I mean, obviously, it's a standalone, so, you know, I don't think it goes quite as intense as the Baron and the Nightingale but it does have similarities and I absolutely adored the Winter Night Trilogy which I read in January so I am looking forward to seeing how I feel about this one all the comparisons that keep being made to it also this will be my first um Sylvia Moreno Garcia book the next one that I have in the terms of standalones is Lady Hotspur by Tessa Grattan. I am also going to be picking up Queens of Venice Leia, but I picked this one up. I wasn't actually planning on picking it up like this soon, but it was on offer. So I thought, OK, well, I'll grab it and then I'll read it once I've picked up Queens of Venice Leia. But this one, uh, so Tessa Grattan is basically doing like whimsical, lyrical fantasy retellings, epic high fantasy retellings of Shakespearean stories. So the first one is uh, Queens of Innes Lear, which is a take on uh, King Lear, obviously. And then this one is a reimagining of, uh, is it one of the Henrys or I can't remember which book it's a retelling of. Um, maybe Henry? Yeah, I think it's one of the Henrys, maybe Henry II. Um, so one of uh, Shakespeare's historicals. And yeah, it's a retelling of that, but with an all-female cast. So we have um, Hal is a female, and then obviously we have Lady Hotspur, and we also have um, Banamora, who are all female. So I'm, I'm looking forward to some queer, epic, high fantasy, feminist Shakespeare retellings, which is not something I thought I'd be verbalising, let's be honest. Uh, but yeah, the plot of this one does sound fantastic. So, I mean, warring princes, but where it's two women instead of two men, just for some reason, just hits different, you know? <laughs> the next ones I'm going to go into, I'll go into the series next, I suppose. I have a couple of bind-ups. The first one being New, Ta uh, New Tales of the Vampires by Anne Rice. This is more vampire stories set in her existing vampire chronicles world but this is a separate series which follows italian vampires um this is a bind up of pandora and also vittorio the vampire um so there's like two separate stories uh bound into one i'm looking forward to picking up this series because i do really want to get back into reading Anne rice's vampire stories but the original vampire chronicles has now gotten so extensive that getting into it will take me so long because it's got to be at least what 16 books at this point i think i've read maybe three and i haven't read them in order i'd need to read them again and it's kind of intimidating so i thought this would ease me back into it and then you know if i'm really vibing with it i can go pick up some more of the original ones um, but yeah, I don't know a huge amount more about this apart from that we are following Pandora, who is a girl um, who's, I think, high, highborn um, and she's like from Rome and then she takes on the name of the mythical Pandora. Um, and then we're also following Vittorio, who I think is in Renaissance era. Yeah, in Renaissance era, Italy. And again, he's a vampire as well. So I love Anne Rice's like, gothic vibes and stuff. So I'm excited to you know get back into reading her books 
the next one the next bind up that i have here is the legacy of honor series by elizabeth moon this is uh well the actual series is called something else um the deed of parkinson uh, whatever it's called something else but the bind up is called legacy of honor and it's two stories which are uh, surrender none and liar's oath and this series i believe is a prequel series to her other series but i'll just read it in chronological order instead of in um publication order and hope that that doesn't screw me over too much i haven't read anything by elizabeth moon and she's got so many books out and this one was a quid so i thought well why not <laughs> um but it does have like kind of a generic fantasy vibe to it but i'm i'm hoping that i'm kind of wrong with it being like just really stereotypical um because yeah it's about this guy who it's about so Gerd will be known as the patron saint of warriors and although he inspired a legend he was once just a man with a cause so i think this is like how he goes from nothing to legend um essentially which again sounds cool it's just that you know it doesn't sound hugely original so I'm hoping that it will surprise me. The next series that I have, there's no longer bind ups, of course, but um, is the um, Machineries of Empire series by Yoon Harley. Can we talk about how cute these guys look together on the shelf? They're going to look fantastic together. Um, and yeah, this one consists of Nine Fox Gambit, Raven Stratagem, The Revenant Gun, and then I also bought the collection of short stories, the he Hexachet stories. Um, and this series is about a girl named Kel Cheris, or is it Keris? It's C-H, but it's with an I, not with a Y. We're going to call her Keris, and you guys can correct me. Um, but yeah, and she um, basically needs to uh protect the empire that she's in and so she is she resorts to the help of an undead tactician named shuas jadao um the good news is that jadao uh has never lost a battle the bad news is in a previous lifetime he went insane and um massacred two armies one of them his own now I don't know why this sounds so freaking cool also i really love getting in loving getting into adult sci-fi a bit more so picking up some you know some adult sci-fi that sounds a little bit unique a little bit off the beaten track sounds fantastic to me and yeah i mean it's dinky as well i think it's like 400 no gosh it's 300 pages so it's really small which you know is fantastic for getting into some adult stuff um and yeah i'm i'm excited I, this will be the second lot of yoon ha lee haul i've done as well because i've also got dragon pa but i'm excited nonetheless um next in the similar sci-fi vein i have a sci-fi fantasy mashup series that is the gosh what's the series called uh daughter of the empire series we'll go with daughter of the empire series um by remedy feist and jenny Wurtz. i have been wanting to pick up something by jenny Wurtz, but i haven't i had no idea where to start so i've already read something by raymond e feist i've already read the riff war saga the original trilogy so i figured it makes sense you know it was a quid for each book i thought three quid for a series why not um this one we're following the ruling lady of a place that is kind of overcome with magical de terrors and things and they are also um at, at the risk of being invaded i believe by some alien insectoid things uh, so she has to marry the son of a deadly enemy and carry this struggle into the heart of his kingdom it does sound unusual because obviously you do have the the threat of the alien invasion but the vibe of the world and you have strongholds and kingdoms sounds very fantasy so i'm looking forward to seeing how well those two elements combine but yeah i do have the entire trilogy which are daughter of the empire uh servant of the empire and mistress of the empire which sounds like she's being demoted each time so you know things things clearly aren't going very well um and then the final series that i have here is the empire of dust trilogy 
by Anna Smith Spark, the first book being Court of Broken Knives. And in this series, we are following, what's his name? Marith. And Marith is, um, basically has nothing to lose. So he has joined a band of mercenaries who are being um, commissioned by Lord Orhan Emerith to um, bring about the end of the empire. The city of Sorlost is one of the most grandiose and um, uh, luxurious cities ever created, but it has made its re residents become very um, careless in terms of safety because they are so privileged. So wanting to bring down the empire, as I said, we have um, Orhan Emerith and um, his band of mercenaries. So um, yeah, it's a adult grim dark fantasy that um, has, I, I've, see, I've seen kind of mixed reviews on this, but I am really excited to get to it. I mean, A, an adult grim dark fantasy written by women. I mean, they're, like the fact that those are happening now is fantastic because I feel like it's a genre the overlooked women for a really long time and now you know we had the likes of the poppy war being as big as it is um so yeah i'm excited to to pick this up but also just the content or context you know with having this really really luxurious fancy fancy rich city possibly being brought down by a group of mercenaries with nothing to lose sounds pretty cool uh, but yeah so the series consists of the court of broken knives the Tower of the Living and Dying, and the House of Sacrifice. I absolutely adore this cover. I want a print of this cover. I think it's stunning. This is, I mean, if it were purple instead of red, this would be my color aesthetic. This is the perfect color aesthetic for me, between having the like, the kind of ominousness and then the, the art in the background absolutely stunning so yeah i'm excited for this um also another one that they just look really nice together on the shelf i mean i know this one's like darker in the middle but i think that that kind of like contrasts the other two really nicely instead of it just being the like all white um that you get you know sanderson style um which makes it you know stands out a little bit on the shelf and i really like that so that's it for this haul um yeah let me know if you've read any of these and enjoyed any of these especially the lesser known ones so like the elizabeth moon one or the yoon ha lee one or the anna smart uh, anna smith spark one uh let me know if you've read any of these but of course if you've read any of the others as well hype them up for me because i'm excited for them um and yeah that's that's it so um yeah thank you ever so much for watching in the description box you'll find links to my twitter instagram and goodreads as well as my blog i'll try and do this real quick and uh yeah also like this video if you liked it subscribe if you've not already hit the bell icon if you want to get notified every time i post a new video if you're interested in any of these series then you might want to stick around because i will probably be reading them relatively soon and i do do dedicated series reviews so if that's not the incentive i don't know what is but that's it from me for today guys bye